Welcome to the Camuna VPM online training. Um, this is the module about error management and especially business errors and VPM and error events. This is in contrast to something we saw um, in the last module, the thread and transaction stuff. I hope you remember that for service tasks and other tasks, you can have an asynchronous continuation configured. So when you get any unexpected error or exception or any technical stuff like network outage or downside or whatever, then these exceptions are caught here. You get an incident and you have some kind of retry mechanism um, in order to automatically retry or to do it manually via cockpit or REST API or whatever. This is really, really handy for all unexpected technical errors. This is something um, you can leverage for your processes. But there's a different class of errors if you have um, really business motivated errors. In our Twitter example, we can make one change here. So if you publish something on Twitter twice, then on the second tweet, you get an error because it's a duplicate. Twitter doesn't allow to, to tweet the same thing in a, in a certain time frame twice. Um, and this is something we can model in the BPMN process because retrying doesn't help, right? If you, if you retry it, you get the same error all the time, all the time again and again. So what we can do, we can use an interrupting boundary error event of the BPMN. This basically tells us if there is an error, and I call that um, duplicate um, notified, um, sorry, duplicate recognized. We go that way and we say something like acknowledge duplicate. This is the demo user. And then we're done. That's something different, right? So I model it in the BKN file. I can do whatever I like here. And the interesting question now is how can I do the connection between the service task, which is implemented in Java, and the error event? And this is actually pretty straightforward. So for the error event, you can define an error code. So that's a tweet, uh, or we say duplicate tweet. Okay, we give it a name, duplicate tweet. And this is configured on the process level, so we have to select it for this um, event because you can re reuse the um, error on different events. We will see that later. Okay, so this is what I do in the BPRN file. And in my Java code, basically I do a try catch around um, my Twitter 4J service call. And I know that if it's a duplicate, I have in the exception message, uh, it says something like um, status is a duplicate. Okay, I make that pretty simple for now because it doesn't matter. If it's some other error, I just rethrow it. Okay, so the whole retrying incident infrastructure works without any change. But if it's a duplicate, I do something else. I throw a new what we call a BPMN error. So that's a class, sorry. <laughs> sorry. That's a class we provide, the BPMN error. And I can hand in the error code. So that's a duplicate tweet. That's everything I have to do. Now I say it's a big command or a duplicate tweet. This is cached here. So I go this way and we can see that live. So I rebuild it and deploy it to my JBoss. I go to the task list. I start a new Twitter demo process. So we say it's a duplicate, right? Start it. I review it, I prove it, I'm done. So the first one should actually be no problem. So I have the first duplicate. And the second one should actually trigger the error event. So again, it's a duplicate. I review it, I prove it, ah, submit it. So that's fine from here. If I refresh it, I have the duplicate tweet. It takes a, a little, a tiny bit. You notice that when I returned, it was not there um, immediately because this is still asynchronous, right? So it's done in the background. But that error is recognized. I go that way and I have the acknowledge duplicate user task.
pretty straightforward. It's always valuable if you want to model some reaction to a, uh, an error, and this is normally only the case if it's really business motivated. Okay, I don't want to have Twitter is down here because then I can start um, email is down here and disk is full or whatever. So I model too much stuff. I only want to have it if it really influences my, my flow, if it's really a business error. If you don't like having the BPMN error class used from us here, there's a different thing you could do. Um, you could go into the error code and basically um, say this should be a Java run exception. If there's a, a Java class in here as an error code, and we basically do an instance of check. If the exception we throw is an instance of that exception, and if yes, we go that way as well, then you don't need the BPM error. Okay. But I like that more. And there is a second interesting thing to know about BPMN because that's not really um, straightforward to see. So if I do something like some other error, what would you expect to have? An interesting thing to think about. In the meanwhile, I redeploy it. Um, I go back to my task list. I start a new Twitter demo process. I say this is a duplicate, I approve it. And this should be an old one, right? We don't get a next acknowledge duplicate process. So what's happening here? I have a look at cockpit, the Twitter demo process. Um, I look in the history and we see the latest one. Where is that? And you see that it's basically just stopped, right? So it walked till here and then it stopped. What happened here? That's interesting to know as well. So we made a slide on that. So this is what we just saw. In the BPMN specification, it says if no catching event is found for an error, this triggers unresolved. The behavior of the process is unspecified. Okay. And this means we terminate the process instance. That's really interesting to see. If we look at the JMOS log, okay, there are some Twitter exceptions. Oh, where is it? What happened here? Sorry. Somehow my Windows annoys me a bit. So we see an info here. Service task published on Twitter throws error with error code some other error. But no catching boundary event was defined. Execution will simply be ended. Okay, that's important to know actually. So um, take care that the errors you throw there are really catched. Because otherwise you end up with the cancel process instances you don't want to have. Okay. Interesting question is why is it configured like that? And this is maybe um, a good idea now to have a look at what else is possible with BPMN error events. Um, what we just saw throwing it from a service task is actually not the most common case for the BPMN specification. The most common thing is that you use BPMN error events throwing and catching. So for example, in this case, we have a sub process. In that sub process, we end with an error in some case. And this error is catched on the boundary, and then we move on here. In this case, this throws an error with an error code, and this error code is, has to be catched here. I think that makes sense, hopefully. The interesting thing here is if you throw an error with an error code you don't know, the process engine doesn't know what to do. Because it cannot continue here, because it's obviously an error, but it doesn't have any any boundary error events, so it cannot continue anywhere. And this is why this is defined like that. Okay. This is, by the way, possible in the engine, so you can execute that process model. You can use the throw error end events as well. And that makes sense pretty often. On this slide, you see um, the error event uh, terminating a sub process, an embedded sub process, and then with the boundary event going another path. 
there's some hint here. Interesting um, to recognize that if you use that end, arrow end event, it terminates that subprocess. So all the data you had only in the subprocess, like subprocess local variables, um, if you look at the um, variable module, you will see that what I mean there. Um, they are gone here. Okay. There's there are other possibilities to to model this case as well. So this is the um, subprocess with an arrow event. You could use a so-called um, event subprocess. So that means when this arrow is triggered, this event subprocess it's basically like this, but with a dashed line. So this um, event subprocess is triggered here. And this one. In that case, it can still access the variables from the subprocess. So that's a slight difference here. Okay, you could have an event subprocess on the whole process uh, uh, definition level. So you could do something like, in my Twitter demo process, I might want to have um, a subprocess. I uh, say this is triggered by an event that makes the dashed line. I say that's a start event, and I say that's an arrow event and I maybe configure it to listen to Java line um, Provo. Not sure if that's Java line actually and I'll we'll make an exception. Maybe a runtime exception. It's even better. Okay. And yeah. I say this is like a, now a generic arrow handling uh, process catching all the errors which are not somehow resolved in the whole process. Then you interrupt what you're doing here and move on in this event subprocess. There are a couple of situations where this is really handy to, to model. Um, you should keep in mind that you cannot easily jump back. So I cannot do something like the retrying. So I jump to that subprocess where I decide, oh, please retry that one and I cannot easily jump back. So that's a difference, okay? Um, but it's still handy in a lot of situations. And there's the last thing we have here. Yeah, that's basically what we already saw. Okay, so that's basically it about the um, error management, about um, BPMN error events. So you can use the BPMN error class. If you do that, please make sure the error code is really catched with an event. You can catch Java exception classes in the BPMN file, and you can throw the errors via the BPMN error events. Okay, And the most important thing is that you now know two different concepts of error handling. One, to care about technical errors, that's the incidents and the retry infrastructure, so you don't model it at all in the BPMN process. You might have an asynchronous plague. Okay. And you know the BPMN error events for business errors. So use the appropriate tool for the, for the right job. Have fun with it. Again, try it out, play around with it. I mean, you see what you can do in the Twitter process. You can basically add everything you want, play around with it. If you have any questions, ask them in the live meeting. Have fun with it. Thank you. That's it for the moment.